Hey friends, good morning. How's everyone doing on the last day of March? I can't believe we're already at the end of March. I feel like I have so much to do and not a lot of time to get it done in. But today I'm really excited to work together because we're gonna be doing two experiments that I've been looking forward to. We're gonna plant out the spring cool flower dianthus in the same bed that I have the fall planted dianthus. So we can see a side-by-side -side comparison of the quality of the plant, the quality of the stem itself, the thickness of the stem, how tall these plants flower. I think that's gonna be so exciting to see them side by side. And then I'm gonna try another experiment that I'm not really sure if it's gonna work or not, but I wanna keep on trying to get better and better with interplanting. And this year I'm gonna try something I've never tried before. I'm going to interplant some of my lilies with saponaria. So last year was the first year I ever grew saponaria and I absolutely adored it. I'm pretty sure there's a white and a pink variety. I've only ever grown the pink variety and I have a lot more of that seed left over. It came to flower in about two months. It was very quick to flower. It was able to handle the cold temperatures, did really well with me just direct seeding it in the garden. And what I noticed about it is that until the plant really flowers, it's pretty small and the root system is small because it basically shoots up one singular stalk and then it branches out at the top into a spray flower. And since that happens so quickly, I'm thinking I can interplant it with some Asiatic and Longiflorum lilies. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a try and see if it works or it doesn't. If it does work, great. If not, I learned something and not a huge deal because it's leftover seed from last year. So let's get to work on these two experiments and then in a few months time, we'll see how it's all shaping up. So here's a close up on the plants before we get started. Now the lowest we got down to this year was seven degrees Fahrenheit. The plants did take on a little bit of damage when that happened. In Lisa's book that I always talk about cool flowers, she lists Dianthus, or Sweet William rather, as hardy down to zone five, and I'm here in zone 6B. So there's our fall planted Dianthus, and here's our spring planted Dianthus. And here's Rocky causing ruckus in the frost cloth yet again. I think we better take that frost cloth off to start. Okay, Rock, I'm sorry, but you can't lay there, honey. I know, I'm sorry. It's so cozy. Come on. Yeah, I was wondering who made that hole. Now I see. So in terms of the treatment here, I'm gonna to try to do everything exactly the same. Also, one thing to note is that I'm aware that the soil in this particular bed is pretty bad. So I think we need to take that into consideration as well. This bed, and I'm doing a ranunculus experiment too. Here comes Rocky. And this bed, both have soil that last year I had to have the soil brought in and it's not my own homemade compost versus the ranunculus in this bed that you probably can't see is my own homemade compost. So I thought that would be an interesting comparison as well. It does appear that we pretty much lost this fall plant, so I'll go ahead and replace that one, but really only losing one is pretty, pretty good. But same exact spacing, same exact watering, and basically all these fall planted ones I never covered. So for the spring planted ones, I'm not gonna cover them either. We will be going into probably the low 30s, you know, 30 degrees Fahrenheit, 29, 28. I'm not gonna cover them at all. And we will just see what happens. If you're looking for some interesting information on interplanting or intercropping when it comes to cut flowers, there's a great podcast that Jenny Love did on her podcast, The No-Till Flowers. I will attempt to link it in the description section below, but if you just search 
no-till flowers on whatever app you like to listen to podcasts. I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Um, every episode of her podcast is super, super helpful. And I'm gonna take some things that she said in terms of interplanting ranunculus and try that this year as well. I think specifically I'm gonna interplant the ranunculus with a single stem celosia and see how that works out for me here. And it's great too, because she always keeps in mind how much everything varies depending on where you live, what your climate's like, are you using a tunnel, are you growing outside? I am pretty close to Jenny Love, but of course I don't grow in a tunnel. So sometimes some things that she says is full of great advice, I just have to alter it a little bit to growing outside. So let me know if you have anything that you'd like to interplant in terms of cut flowers. I'd love to hear about that. And if you don't mind, tell us about your climate too. So you can really know what you're dealing with in terms of weather and pest issues. All right, so here we have it. Fall planted, spring planted, rocky planted. <laughs> I guess we have to remove that cover too. Too tempting. So these lilies I'm just gonna grow as annuals. These are Lily Longiflorum Asiatic Royal Sunset is the cultivar. And I'm pretty sure that was a beautiful orange and pink. I'm gonna place these eight inches apart, six inches deep. And then my thought is to come in between the lilies with a direct sowing of the sapin area. So let's see how that works out. I love lilies, I find them so interesting. I learned from Dave Dowling over at Ball Color Link, he's the cut flower specialist for them, that lilies grow roots along their stems. And it's those stem roots that are really important in terms of them producing a nice, strong stem for us and a nice big flower head. The roots at the base are just there for their initial growth, but he says it's the stem growth, the roots that grow along the stem that are really, really important. So last night I was adding all these rose lilies to the driveway garden and the ground is so compacted over there. It's like a night and day experience planting over there versus over here. So these are all for selling. These will all go to the flower stand. And if this works, I might have to try some other things like maybe lilies and forget-me-nots. Oops, here's a random Buplerum. So I got all 30 lilies in, and so now let's go in between them with some saponaria seed. I think I ordered, did I order a whole ounce? No, I ordered a half an ounce last year and I barely used any, <laughs> but look at this. I can't bring myself to make him move off this frost cloth too. If he wants to sleep there and crush one of the ranunculus, that's gonna be okay with me. So if this works, we'll have four rows. So much seed here. I'm gonna seed it pretty heavily. It says every two inches. I might do about every one inch just to be safe. Not only are saponaria flowers gorgeous, but the pods that they produce afterwards, I was drying them and using them for craft projects. I used them on the dried flower Christmas tree and I just adored the texture. I thought I have to grow a lot more of it this year. Then I was rereading one of my favorite floral design books, which is Cultivated, The Elements of Floral Design. 
And I happened to notice, and it was funny because the first time I read the book, I didn't know what the flower was. So I think I just kind of passed it by. But Kristen used saponaria in one of these arrangements. I'll throw a picture or some video up on the screen. And it just took the arrangement from gorgeous, because all her work is gorgeous, to really magical using all the saponaria. So last year I only used saponary just in um, hand-tied mixed bouquets. So I want to try to practice with it more in formal work as well. Well friends, I think that pretty much does it for me today. I've been planting bare root perennials all morning, so it's actually about two o'clock now. Almost time for pear and pickup. But I'm really excited that we were able to start these experiments together and I'll be sure to share the results with you, even if they're both epic failures. I will show you what happens as it happens and we will learn together. So friends, I wanna wish you guys a great day out there in your gardens. Rocky says he's chilling the rest of the day out here on the frost cloth, but we'll see you sometime soon. Bye.